It's late on the evening of April 22nd. The family is not getting clear answers from the base about Vanessa's whereabouts. So in a last minute desperate move, Myra, her sister, and Juan, her fiance, decide to make the drive to Fort Hood to try and get answers themselves about Vanessa. I knew something was wrong because I would check her social media, like, man, how hopefully she tweeted something. I was just checking, checking, but nothing. On my way there, I was just crying because I, I, I couldn't understand. I, I didn't want to think the worst, but a lot of panic. All night, Myra texts Vanessa to no avail. 8.35, hello, 11, Vanessa, at 1 o'clock in the morning, bro. And then later that day, I'm going to find you, I promise. I got to Fort Hood, it was about 3 in the morning, and I called the staff surgeon again, hey, I'm here, and he's asleep. He just tells me, oh, can you come back in the morning? And I was like, okay, I guess. I arrive at Fort Hood on the 23rd, about 8 o'clock in the morning. They told me that her keys, her car, her military ID, debit cards were there. Vanessa's cell phone was nowhere to be found, but her other belongings were found in the arms room where she had been working earlier in the day. Vanessa's mom's reaction? Well, it's what any mom would demand in that situation. Yo con una desesperación. Búscala en el edificio de armas. Búscala allí, que cierren la base. La base tiene que cerrar. On the 23rd, the military police were contacted, and they used their uh, resources to do local law enforcement checks. And so when that search came back without any results, then that's when CID is notified. In the Army, they have what they call U.S. Army Criminal Investigative Division, or CID. And they basically investigate anything that's serious. I texted my other sister, and I was like, what's going on? She was like, we think when this is going, it's missing. And I was like, how can she go missing on a military base? That's ridiculous. Go find her and better find her. I decided to start taking action. I started doing posters. I'll be going to the gas stations, to stores, to the metros, posting and missing like the love of my life. It's a nightmare. At this point, I was really doubting about social media, but I posted it. At this point, I start seeing these posts, and I was just thinking, why haven't we been on alert that there is a missing soldier? And that evening, I reported on the fact that Vanessa was missing. Private First Class Vanessa Guillen was last seen on Wednesday, and her loved ones say they need everyone's help to find her. I interviewed her sibling, Yovana Guillen, and Vanessa's boyfriend. She was just gone, so she just disappeared. Every minute that passes, it's like killing me inside slowly. I was desperate, like, I came up in the news and I was like, Damn, am I really doing this? I just hope she's okay. Hopefully we find her. Call the police, something. But please, don't be afraid. Something told me this was bigger than what it seemed. That day, the Army sent out a press release. In the notice, law enforcement stated that she was last seen on April 22nd around 1 p.m. in their regimental engineering parking lot on Fort Hood. That information came from several soldiers who were not a part of Vanessa's unit. They gave conflicting reports about what she was wearing and when she was last seen. They didn't really know Vanessa. And frankly, it wasn't, it wasn't a real strong lead Chris Swecker reviewed the Vanessa Guillen case file. Now, he's a former state prosecutor who spent 24 years at the FBI. 
He was asked by the Army to lead an independent review panel of the command climate at Fort Hood. Did that early information throw off CID investigators? It really did, because there was pre-existing information from earlier in the morning as to where Vanessa had gone. An extensive search is now underway by military members, as well as civilian and military police. The meetings with CID were useless. There was no new information. We gave them literally every single thing that they asked for, and for them not to give us an answer was like, the problem is inside. We can't tell everything. We have to maintain the integrity of the investigation. People on the street are looking for her, search teams looking for her, civilian search teams and military search teams, everyone looking for Vanessa. I mean, even just driving down the freeway, you see a big billboard, find Vanessa Guillen. Vanessa's family doesn't feel like they're getting straightforward answers from the Army. So they start holding protests outside the east gate of Fort Hood. We started protesting every Friday. Why do we want? Yeah. Yeah. It's Everyone is wondering why would Vanessa go missing? And in the background, her mom feels as though she knows the answer to that. And it all goes back to a conversation she had with Vanessa months before she vanished. Y la senté en el comedor más yo sola, yo y ella. Le dije, ¿me vas a decir? Dijo, sí, pero vas a ser fuerte. Vas a tratar de no alterarte. Dijo, porque es algo duro y fuerte. Le dije, ay, Dios mío, ¿qué será? Ay, Dios mío. A mí me está acosando sexualmente un sargento. Le dije, no, mija, es que eso no puede ser, mija. ¿Cómo a, a ese grado? Dijo, sí, mami, y se le salen unas grimitas así. She told her family that she was being sexually harassed, but she didn't report it out of fear of retaliation and retribution. And because you're reporting that harassment basically up the chain of command, in the end, whether someone is prosecuted or not is up to the unit commander. I'll get out of this. Vanessa's mom, Gloria, initially holds that knowledge close to her chest. But then, security camera video of Vanessa emerges. Is it a clue to what might have happened to her? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.